In this video, I'm going to recap the futures uh, market price action for Friday, the 26th of January, 2024. Uh, you can find my referral links in the description box below. <clears throat> I recommend uh, signing up for the American Express Blue Cash Preferred Credit Card. 6% on groceries, 3% on gasoline, 3% on transit, 1% uh, on all of your daily purchases. Get a $75 statement credit by using my referral link in the description box below. You can also find referral links to Apex Trader Funding, Top Step Trader Funding, The Trading Pit, uh, GMPH. Okay, guys, uh, with the referral links out of the way, let's get into uh, the review for Friday's price action. We're here on the three-minute chart. We're going to start with the pre-market repricing macro, uh, and then I'm going to switch us over to the uh, regular trading hours and talk about some of the runs on liquidity that that price made, um, some of the patterns that you could have seen potentially to take a trade. Um, and I'm, I guess I might show you my executions as well. Uh, I did profit on Friday. Okay, guys, so the first thing I want to draw your attention to is the pre-market repricing macro, which ICT talks about in some of his videos. And it's about the one hour mark before the futures market opens. And so basically what it is is the stocks open up at 0930 New York local time. The pre-market traditionally is about one hour before that. The futures market is going to rapidly converge on what the market believes that fair, like the fair market value of stocks. And so you're oftentimes guys going to also have your news events come out an hour before the stock market opens. And so you can expect there sometimes to be pretty dramatic moves in price between one hour before the stock market opens and then up into the stock market open. Okay, so our, our pre-market repricing macro here, you can see uh, really didn't go anywhere in the end. But what we did, we ran on buy side liquidity. We turn around, we ran on sell side liquidity by running in on this rejection block. And then the market ended up opening up um, right on the sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. So the pre-market repricing macro for Friday uh, really just ran on both sides of the liquidity. So um, basically, guys, if you're new to trading or if you just don't want to take on as much risk, be very careful having positions in the market from one hour before the stocks open up until the stocks open. Remember that futures are derivative of stocks. And so th there's going to be a lot of volatility from the futures price converging on what the market believes the fair, the fair value of stocks is for, the, for that trading day. Okay, so be very careful um, one hour before the stock market opens, right up until when the stock market opens. Okay, guys, let's get to our regular trading hours. Um, let me take the pre-market repricing macro out. We know that that just ran on both sides of the liquidity. And then let's talk about the first 30 minutes of trading. Guys, we're on the regular trading hours now. Let's get down on the two-minute chart, and let's start with the opening range. So what is the opening range, guys? Well, the opening range is the first 30 minutes of trading, and it sort of sets your opening liquidity pools above and below the marketplace. Again, if you want to be pretty cautious and conservative in your trading, which is totally understandable, um, one thing you can do is you can wait for the first 30 minutes of trading uh, to pass and wait until those first uh, buy side and sell side liquidity pools are, are established in the marketplace. Because uh, more likely than not, the market's going to run on one of those liquidity pools. So let's first take a look at where our opening range set the buy side and the sell side liquidity. So you can see at 0934, we had the buy side liquidity set here. And we'll say the sell side liquidity was set here. So that was our opening range. Our opening range formed a high at 49.25 quarters. And our opening range low was at 49.14 uh, three quarters. Okay, so the first thing to notice in your first sort of trading opportunity coming into the AM session was noticing that we had buy side liquidity here, where you can see. Uh, let's see here if I have buy side liquidity, sell side liquidity, buy side. Okay, uh, so we had 
buy side liquidity here. All right, now, so notice that the market, after we formed the opening range, we ran on a little bit of sell side liquidity. We then the market came back down and retested in the AM session. When we formed this two bar candle pattern reversal and we had a little bit of a breakaway gap here on the two minute chart, excellent idea that the market was going to run on this buy side liquidity. And even if you got in here 49.18 and you exited just a few ticks above, that would have been a seven point trade. Okay, so the very first trade idea of the day was from our opening range, the buy side liquidity here and the market forming this sort of bottoming formation and our AM session ran on the buy side liquidity. Let's look at our next trade as we're in the AM session. We've talked about the opening range. We've talked about our first move on the opening range buy side liquidity. The AM session formed a high here at 1100, which is a, a very appropriate time for the market to form a high. We see that we had sell side liquidity from our, from our AM session here. Okay. So as we came into the lunch session, there wasn't a whole lot more of the AM session to be spoken about. But as we came into the lunch session, notice that we formed a breakaway gap here. Okay. Or you could say the breakaway gap was here. We knew that we had sell side liquidity here sitting below this low at 49.12 three quarters. So as the lunch session uh, form these sell side breakaway gaps, it would have been a good idea to, to take note of that and that the uh, buy side was, the sell side was going to be ran. So we ended up running the sell side during the lunch, the, uh, the lunch macro. Now coming into the PM session, you can see that we double dip down into the sell, below the sell side liquidity here. We formed something of a fair value gap here and a breakaway gap. And then we ran Okay. We ran on this buy side liquidity here. So notice that we had minor buy side liquidity here. Okay, and notice that the market ran above it. And we also, uh, when we formed our high for the PM session at 49.23, three quarters, notice that we were running back into this sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. And that was sort of the last move for the day. Okay, so um, the opening range formed a buy side liquidity target that I think was probably your easiest trade of the day. The AM session formed our high of the day at 49.34 three quarters. That was also a, the S&P 500's all time high. And then as we came into the lunch session, you see we consolidated and then we ran on sell side liquidity that we'd formed in the AM session. The PM session uh, ran on some minor buy side liquidity and then ultimately traded back down into this buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. So let's uh, get out of the intraday view here. Look at our weekly time frame and our daily time frame. Uh, I think I pretty well covered your trading opportunities. Finally, let me, let me show you some of my executions. Pretty difficult to see, I know. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. My uh, it, it's it's really. You can see I am an active day trader. It's kind of difficult to see, follow along what I was doing. Um, I did make a profit on Friday, but uh, I gave some of it back in the PM session. I was I was up the most during the AM session. Uh, I was probably over trading a little bit here now that I, now that I look at back at this. That's why we do these recap guys. We. Remember, we want to be familiar with our standard three session model during the regular trading hours, the AM session, the lunch session, and the PM session. In this video, I've also discussed the opening range, which is the first 30 minutes of regular trading hours. And I also discussed the pre-market re repricing macro, which is one hour up until the stocks open. Okay, guys, let's get rid of these drawings and let's go to the weekly chart. First off, uh, let's see if our Thank God It's Friday model worked out. Yeah, guys, you can see that the Thank God It's Friday model, if that was the only model that you were looking at on Friday, you can see that the market uh, closed 
somewhat near that 30% of the weekly retracement. So if you were using the thank God it's Friday model um, for your only trade of the day, that would have been profitable. So I just wanted to mention the thank God it's Friday model. Um, finally, let's get back on the weekly chart. So the we're on three green candles in a row. We are sitting above our prior all-time high that we formed on the 3rd of January of 2022. We're currently sitting over 100 points above that. Um, let's take a look at our, our uh, standard deviation projections and see where we're at. So the market uh, did come up to one and a half standard deviations, taking this range uh, from the candle bodies. We came almost to the one and a half standard deviations. Now let's take a look at from the high to the low. Uh, just above the half standard deviation to a three-quarter standard deviation, closing nearly exactly at the 49.12 three-quarters, very close to the half standard deviation. Again, let's go back down to the bodies of the candles and use those instead, and we can see that we're right at the one and a half standard deviations. So three, three weekly green candles in a row, and finally, uh, using the Thank God It's Friday model, you can see that we we ended up closing below 30% of the weekly candle. Again, below 30% of the weekly candle. Um, so at about 40% of the weekly candles range. We're on three green candles in a row. All right, let's get down to the daily chart. You can see that we had Monday was a green candle. Tuesday was a green candle. Wednesday was a doji candle. Thursday was a green candle. And we had a little bit of a spinning top candle on Friday. So our first appearance in a quite a long time of a black candle, uh, first appearance of a black candle for some time. I'm again, uh, guys, I think that the market is sort of broad strokes is going to be attracted back down to this trading range. So here you can see that we have a daily trading range. And I tend to believe that the market is going to be attracted back down to this daily trading range that you can see here. So I think the market's going to be attracted back down to the daily trading range. Let's take the 50% of that. That would also kind of line up with a rejection block. That's 47.71, three quarters. I'm, guys, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. The market could go up endlessly. Uh, I don't want to be the one to call tops because uh, how could I possibly know if the market has, has reached a top or not? What I will say is that the market tends to be attracted to trading ranges. Trading ranges tend to act as magnets for price. And Friday's candle uh, finally appearing as a black candle, I, I tend to think, guys, we're going we're gonna to have some retracement in the market. I think it's only reasonable that the market um, slows down and, and retraces. Really difficult for me to see the market endlessly running higher. But of course, mathematically, guys, it can do whatever it wants. Okay, guys, so in this video, I discuss some of your different trading opportunities and discuss the market's price action for Friday, uh, January 24th, we, we, January 26th. We briefly talked about the Thank God It's Friday model. We discussed the uh, pre-market repricing macro, the AM session, lunch session, and the PM session. And I showed you a little bit of my executions, probably over trading, admitted, admittedly. Okay, guys, uh, this has been my price recap for Friday, January the 26th. Quick disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Trading involves substantial risk of loss, including more capital than you initially invest in your account. Do not trade with funds that you cannot afford to lose. Okay, guys, uh, refer links in the description box below. Bye-bye.